Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Piero Canepa. I'm a, an assistant professor at the National University of Singapore. And uh, uh, this research I'm going to present relates to nasicon or natrium uh, so, uh, solid by ionic conductor, electrolytes and electro uh, type of properties. We use extensively in this talk uh, computational material science to investigate the properties of this material. I thank you, I, I take the advantage to thank you the organizer of this uh, um, meeting, especially Jordi Cabana, uh, Joaquin Lopez, Christine Pearson, and George Crabtree uh, for inviting me to this session. And uh, this is a great opportunity, especially for young people like me uh, to provide my insight on our research. The main uh, chief actor in this research are obviously these uh, three young men at the, at the top row of these slides, they have contributed immensely in this work and in this investigation of Nasikund. I have to thank also uh, my collaborator, Christian Mascalier at the um, at LRCS in France and uh, Tony Chitan at the University of Santa Barbara, as well as Hydropolis Krishna at the New Institute of Science. This research is funded through the National Research Foundation in Singapore and a joint grant with ANR, which is the equivalent research agency in France. Uh, before I delve into my research, uh, there are a number of topics uh, my lab uh, uh, works on. Uh, we've been working on multivalent batteries in the past years, intercalation batteries, ion transport and metal developments, in particular today's talk related to intercalation batteries and sodium, sodium ion batteries. So, Lithium and other transition metal are obviously not well distributed. We are all aware of this, especially for people uh, staying in this session. Uh, in particular, all our society uh, has been witnessing a, a surge interest in, in the electric vehicles. And these are the um, speculative plots put forward by the European Union by 20, 20, 20, 2050, 26 million of electric vehicle are supposed to be on the road. Uh, whether you take it as true or not, this number is surely uh, suggest uh, that uh, there is an, an, an interest in, in electric vehicle. And uh, so uh, relying on, on just one type of technology, lithium base is, uh, is definitely not a, a secure pathway to ensure the, uh, I mean, that we fulfill this, this number and this uh, statistic. So diversifying, our type of uh, uh, battery or energy storage system is certainly a good, a good strategy. Sodium ion in that sense uh, comes up as a very great, uh, interesting opportunities when we are talking about stationary application. Uh, a couple of words on sodium is ubiquitous, much more ubiquitous than lithium and can be extracted from seawater. Uh, cost of extraction may be higher than, the, uh, than lithium, but uh, uh, it's ubiquitous for sure. And another, a second advantage of sodium batteries, despite being less energy dense than uh, um, uh, lithium ion, no matter what, is that they use aluminum co current collector instead of copper. There has been a lot of investigation, especially from the Japanese group and French group, as well as American group on uh, the intercalation, thermodynamic and kinetics of intercalation of sodium in transition metal oxide. But these materials, despite being uh, having a higher energy density, they are uh, prone to uh, undergo a lot of phase transition. So this affects their longevity in the utilization. A natural choice uh, to diversify this phase from transition metal, layer transition metal oxide is to look at polyanion based structure. And these are the structure that I will discuss today, in particular, the nasicon type of structure. There is interest from an uh, of a company point of view, these are a number of companies that uh, have been working in this area, in particular Tiamat, a new French company associated with the LRCS lab is interested in Nazicon based material. Nazicon structure is a uh, old, uh, uh, is a whole structure for sure, but still uh, very much studied because it's complex, right? It's, uh, it's definitely more complex of the transition metal oxide. Um, in, in, in this structure, you have uh, the prototypical structure goes back to the uh, uh, sodium zirconium silicon phosphate structure proposed by Ongen Gudenhoff, 
almost 40 years ago. In this structure, zirconium, the transition metal, sits in octahedrally coordinated environments made by the oxygen from the phosphate of the silicate, which are uh, sitting in the tetrahedron. The interstitial sites formed by uh, the coordination of zirconium and phosphate or silicate for, uh, give, give rise to two different sodium sites, sodium one and sodium two. Sodium one sits in between two zirconate, in this case, or two transition metal oxide, in the general case of classical, and um, sodium two uh, is, uh, is the result of an uh, environment uh, uh, made by uh, silicate and phosphate. So. Obviously, the, I, this material is uh, well known for its high conductivity, especially at high temperature, where the phase transition from a uh, monoclinic uh, low conductivity structure at room temperature to a high temperature room with structure. The second aspect why this material is uh, very interesting and it forms an excellent uh, uh, playground to, to study the chemistry and, uh, and utilize this material also for electrodes is that zirconium can be replaced by open cell transition metals such as titanium, vanadium, chromium, iron, and uh, also combination of those, which can give us excellent uh, electrodes that we will see later. So the, today's goals are really to elucidate and try to understand the transformation, phase transformation of the nominal nasicon composition with this uh, sodium, zirconium, silicon phosphate, as well as translate this knowledge to other nasicon materials, in particular, electrodes and and does map the chemical space. The methodology we use is we, we leverage an ICST, inorganic chemical structure database, but then we use theory and computation, in particular uh, density functional theory coupled with cluster expansion and Monte Carlo to produce nice phase diagram uh, and understand voltage properties and uh, all uh, draw really a uh, a link between the properties of this material that we observe in practical electrochemical experiments uh, to uh, what is the structure or pro structure that uh, we maybe record to an extra diffractogram or so on and so forth, with the hope of hopefully to make this material more accessible to application. So let me give you just an example for the experimental audience here in this session. Uh, on how DFT or these uh, techniques, DFT cluster expansion and Monte Carlo all together provides an excellent platform to study this material. This here I'm showing you the lattice constants of Nasicon, which is a rhomboidal IE hexagonal structure. So two different lattice constants, A shown by the um, uh, yellow stars and C shown by the red stars as function of sodium content, IE, uh, variable silicon phosphorus content. You can see that the A uh, constant uh, from an experimental point of view, this is a neutron diffraction of single crystal, uh, uh, grows monotonically as the sodium content increases, whereas A uh, uh, so, so slowly decline as uh, the um, composition in sodium content increases. And this well represented by DFT, where is uh, data that are shown here by the dashed line. So this gives credibility to our model. But more importantly, uh, uh, what I wanted to concentrate my attention on is the phase diagram of the rhomboidal nasical structure. So in this figure here, I'm showing the composition on the x-axis as I change, obviously, the sodium content from zero which means one sodium into the structure all the way to three, i.e. four sodium into the structure, I'm looking at the stability and how is favorable to insert the sodium in this structure. So the y-axis indeed shows the mixing enthalpy, negative values of mixing enthalpy uh, from a just a thermodynamic point of view are an indication of favorable bonding of sodium inside the framework of silicon phosphate framework with zirconium around. So what can one see here are three stable structure. One is the structure at zero, silicon rich, one sodium in the structure. The structure at three, four, uh, x equal three, which is four sodium in the structure. And one stable structure uh, at uh, uh, sodium two, uh, which is, uh, um, sorry, so, uh, x equal two, so, three sodium in the structure. And these three, um, structure form the so-called convex salt or the stability uh, line 
a stability envelope that describes the phase diagram at zero Kelvin of this material. Uh, one point to remark is that why are we interested in the zero Kelvin phase diagram, which is uh, uh, nonetheless non accessible and not practical? Well, the phase diagram at zero Kelvin informs us on the bonding properties of sodium inside the material. So entropy is not captured, of course, but this, uh, uh, so enthalpy is the only uh, figure of merit that we are capturing here if enthalpy just relies on bonding property and efficacy of chemical bonds. So this tells us that uh, between zero and two, the system phase separate is biphasic and two and three, uh, the system is biphasic as well. So this is in, uh, what the phase diagram is zero can. Now, uh, there are obviously ordering of the sodium, sodium atoms associated to this specific ground state at zero Kelvin. Uh, so the phosphorus rich phase, which is illustrated here with the, the uh, uh, red square, uh, is obviously uh, sodium there resides in the sodium one side. This is well uh, in, in, in good, co in, in excellent agreement with the experiment. Uh, the silicon rich phase, which is illustrated by the uh, uh, green a square uh, there, all the sodium sites are occupied. So the distribution of sodium occurs on sodium uh, one and sodium two type of site. Uh, whereas our minima at x equal two, i.e. three sodium in the structure indicates that sodium is just located as sodium two. This is obviously not realistic because we know that uh, from an experimental point of view, uh, the highest conductivity, the 50 milli uh, Siemens uh, Per, uh, millisiemens uh, per centimeter that I show at the beginning are really obtained in this area at x equal two or three sodium and uh, plus minus delta, which means that uh, both sodium one and sodium two needs to be occupied. We'll touch upon these properties in the next slide. So from, however, from a uh, our computational method, we can start to look at the phase diagram as function of temperature. So this is the typical, uh, typical phase diagram are plotted, composition on the same axis, on the X axis and temperature on the Y axis. Uh, you, we can see some niche uh, features that uh, are uh, interesting and that will, will enable us to discuss the material in pro in, in, in properly. So uh, two uh, main monophasic regions are available at x equals zero, x equal two, and x equal three. This means that at this composition, we have a monophasic region, and this is well captured by the convex solder that I was showing a few, few minutes ago. As temperature in, increase, uh, some of this uh, uh, and concentration is changed. Let's uh, suppose we place ourselves at x equal one, meaning the two sodium are available in the structure. And in this region, the system is entirely phase separate. So you see that we are ending, if we, look, if we put ourselves at 400 Kelvin, we are ending in, a, in this red area, A plus B, where there is an entire phase separating system. Likewise, if we put ourselves at 2.5 at the temperature of 600 Kelvin, there uh, there is a phase, we are in a region of phase separation. That, this is what thermodynamics tell us and the phase that computed phase diagram tell us you can obviously take this with a pinch of salt experimentally we nazicon has never been reported to phase separate uh, however there are also just a handful three to four experiment uh, in this area where we predict phase separation the star in the diagram represents experimental uh, measurements and you can see that most of the experimental measurement uh, ends up to be around the interested sodium content in this material, which is x equal two or three sodium, three plus uh, minus delta um, in this composition, and is uh, well captured by this the, the red stars in, in this area. So theory tells us the system should phase separate in the robohedral phase. Uh, experimentally, we don't find phase separation. We can learn more from the phase diagram. The phase diagram is a real, a real mine of data, and we can start to look at the uh, co um, occupation of various sites and see uh, whether uh, we can uh, uh, give an insight or at least uh, reproduce the experimental data. So this is the data, the red star are for Bolio and, and uh, this French group. Uh, this is a nice paper where they use neutron diffraction on um, single crystal sample of nazical obviously unnominal composition we really don't know if the composition is really what they report 
but one can see that if you place itself, uh, if I place myself now at, at around 450 Kelvin, uh, the and I try to extract the occupation of the various sodium sites, sodium one and sodium two, uh, in the, the computed phase diagram, these agree very well with the stars. In blue stars, I'm showing the occupation of sodium one from experiment, the red stars, uh, the occupation of sodium two from experiment. We can see that at zero sodium content, uh, sorry, at one sodium into the structure, so phosphorus rich regime, uh, sodium one is fully occupied. At sodium x equal three, is four sodium in the structure, sodium two is fully occupied. And there is a switch of occupation as I start to increase the concentration between uh, from zero to three, whereby sodium, sodium uh, two gets slowly occupied and sodium one. Uh, gets deoccupied and then its occupation is, increases again after x equal to. If I increase temperature further, I place myself at 600 or uh, even 900 degrees C, I can see that the, occupa the occupation of sodium 2 and sodium 1 start to become um, available, uh, especially in the area uh, at a slightly higher concentration than 3 sodium in the structure, meaning here in the graph, uh, x equal two point something, um, two point five or so, and this allowed really to uh, enable transport in this structure. So this uh, this tells us that the, our phase diagram indeed it predicts a phase separation, which is not found experimentally, but it can gauge pretty well um, the occupation found from an experimental point of view, and this is uh, really very informative to understand the transport mechanism as function of temperature. So increasing temperature effectively increase or change the occupation of sodium one and sodium two at composition higher than x equal to. But let's make a step back in the sense that we wanted to utilize this information that we have uh, found on the nominal composition of Nazicon, meaning the Nazicon from good enough with zirconium ion, and we try to translate this information to transition metal based, um, open shell transition metal based electrodes uh, that are also the Nazi structure. First of all, here I'm plotting the voltage curve. These are experimental data from a number of groups that have been studying titanium based Nazi vanadium, chromium, and iron. A common feature is that all these materials are by physics. In other words, between zero and two, uh, x equal two, this material phase separates, and the same for vanadium and iron between two and three. So this is uh, in good agreement uh, with the fact that we see phase separation in the nazicon uh, zirconate structure, but is not reported. So what it, what makes this material difference uh, different from the uh, zirconium that experimentally is not found phase separate as sodium content is, is buried. Uh, this is the real question we're trying to answer here. There is a second feature here. All this material at x equal to undergo a rhombohedral to monoclinic phase transition. So there is a strong sub stabilization at x equal to, which uh, gives a, a, a step in the voltage curve in this region, and uh, this transition uh, is enabled by a rhombohedral to monoclinic transition. And now what I've done here, I superimpose the computer phase diagram for the sodium zirconium um, silicate phosphate beneath uh, the, the, the voltage curve computed for titanium, vanadium, chromium, and iron. This is to uh, say that uh, indeed we find that uh, a lot of analogy between the solid electrolyte uh, proposed by Goodenough many, many years ago and the transition metal oxide a phosphate. Uh, so the fact that we don't see a uh, phase separation in real experiment of biphasic type of behavior in the real experiment of the uh, material from good enough, i.e. the uh, sodium zirconium silicon phosphate, is because this would require the um, redistribution of silicon and phosphate in the in the lattice of, of the nazicon itself. This is obviously not the case for the electrode because the phase separation there is just uh, the due to the distribution of the electrons and uh, um, the, the segregation of the, the, tra the, the transition metal oxide, transition metal uh, charges in the material. So from computing the, in summary, 
from computing the um, uh, phase diagram of the sodium zirconium silicon phosphate, uh, we can uh, then try to understand why phase separation occurs in the electrode. Of course, uh, thermodynamic tell us that all the system will phase separate is observed on the voltage curve for the transition open shell transition metal um, Hasikun is not observed from the from the experimental diffractogram of the sodium zirconium silicon phosphate and this fact that we don't observe it is due to the kinet kinetically inhibit or prohibited barrier for the silicate and phosphate to reorganize in the sodium zirconium silicon phosphate in Hasikun. So one uh, from this, one can draw the idea that one can stabilize probably or eliminate or reduce in part the phase separation in the uh, sodium base uh, uh, electron material. So the titanium, the thiophosphate, uh, 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 sorry, thiophosphate, the titanium phosphate, uh, vanadium phosphate, uh, and iron phosphate, uh, nazicum based uh, so, uh, sodium electrode just probably by adding silicon uh, into the phosphorus structure. These are whether are some repercussion of the voltage, capacity, etc. But let me, in the final stage of this talk, let me look at, at the second part of the work that we have done on Nazicon in our group in collaboration with Christian at LRCS, but as well as Laurence Corbonek and Danny Calais in Bordeaux. So uh, again, uh, not to, to bore you too much, but this is the typical voltage curve of uh, sodium uh, vanadium phosphate. Uh, so in the Nazicon form, uh, we have again a phase transition from rhombohedral to monoclinic. This is well captured by the formation energy diagram at zero Kelvin, which translates to a voltage curve with a step at uh, around at, at the three. And uh, this also confirm very well the the voltage curve that I showed you before. The situation become more interesting when you start to uh, study the transition metal, the row, the first row of transition metal. So going from titanium all the way uh, to, to in the direction of nickel. <clears throat> so first of all, the voltage, the, the voltage is increases as we increase the um, from titanium to nickel in a, almost a monotonic fashion. We'll come back to that. But uh, there are some neat features that one can uh, come up with by just analyzing the formation energy curve, which is this plot on the top left that I'm showing here. Obviously, chromium is the one that provides the highest stability at x equal three, and this corresponds also to a large voltage step in this in this uh, in this area. And this is due to the fact that chromium to pass is extremely uh, stable cation, and this. Uh, favor the system to undergo this um, uh, stabilization and then increase uh, significantly the voltage. Obviously, why don't we see sodium, uh, for sodium in uh, all chromium uh, phosphate or all manganese phosphate? This is because to the um, high and teller distortion of uh, the <clears throat> chromium 2 plus and manganese 3 plus. Uh, however, computation is good in this sense because it's enabled us to also. Uh, somehow extract information from the cobalt and nickel nazicum, which obviously cannot be made in the lab, but uh, 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 can be computed uh, and uh, some uh, useful information in terms of tuning potential mixed nazicum where cobalt or nickel might be introduced in the formulation can be extracted simply by this analysis. Well, of course, we, as I said, we can mix uh, Nazicum with other transition metal uh, oxide. Here we are trying to do this in a ratio of one to one, mean a 50 50 ratio. And um, what I'm showing here in this graph is the computed average voltage as I change the transition metal oxide. The orange curve shows you uh, the situation in which I have the transition metal oxide, one transition metal oxide being titanium, and the other transition metal oxide being one of the uh, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, or nickel. And you can see that there is a monotonic increase of the voltage in this situation. And these also occur for the green line, whereby uh, we have the same transition metal oxide on the phosphate. Uh, there is a word where if you look carefully at this curve, a small plateau in the area of manganese and iron. And this is due to the stabilization of the 3D35. So there is a not 
not a, a strong driving force for this uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, transition method to get further reduced. So in summary here, I'm showing the voltage curve for the mono single transition metal oxide of the first row of the periodic table. And uh, as, uh, as we know, um, and as we expect, uh, they follow almost a linear, linear relationship uh, following the standard um, reduction potential of this transition metal oxide, going from 1.96 volts versus sodium, uh, all the way to 4.4 in the case of an hypothetical nickel Nazi commutator. Now, of course, we can extend this and introduce more transition metal into the structure. Here we have done the 28 combination, keeping the transition metal at a one to one ratio. And uh, there are some interesting uh, features that can be highlighted. One common feature is that uh, while we introduce a transition, a second transition metal in ratio one to one, the redu reduction or oxidation potential of this transition metal of the uh, overall nasicon is uh, almost independent and one can uh, assign, uh, can really know beforehand what will be the uh, oxidation of titanium, for example, in a titanium mixed manganese uh, phosphate type cathodes. So redox couples in mix and nasicon of the transition metal in mixed nasicon are nearly independent. Uh, other information that can be extracted is new nasicon material, the nasicon nickel based material. All nickel is the highest voltage, but uh, will be hard to synthesize. We have computed phase diagram that show clearly that this material are unstable in the whole phase space of the quaternary, uh, quaternary sorry, composition, quaternary composition space. But uh, this analysis offer opportunity in finding new nasical materials such as the iron nickel uh, phosphate compounds, for example. So in summary, and my conclusion is that by studying the sodium zirconium silicon phosphate, uh, the, we, it, it's a, this gives us a great platform to understand many of the other pro properties of other nasicon. I try to link the properties of this nasicon with the nasicon of electro, the, the electrode-based nasicon material. So we have where titanium, iron, and vanadium nasicon have been heavily studied from an experimental standpoint. Uh, we offer, uh, by adding silicon into the structure, we might, of the electrode material, we might um, reduce or tame the phase separation of this material, assuming that we wanted to uh, eliminate phase separation. Uh, we have been extended, we have done an extended study and search of 28 type different nasicon. In here, we have studied the thermodynamic properties of this 28 element, a 28 type of nasicon where the transition metal is mixing ratio, are mixing ratio one to one. Remember that only 13 nasicon have been investigated experimentally. So this study served to experimental groups to really focus on certain areas that maybe have not been explored. Uh, an outlier in all these studies is the sodium manganese phosphate that uh, supposedly, at least, uh, at least from a theoretical point of view, might be stable in certain area uh, at certain oxidation states, but experimentally this has not been reported. However, it does mix manganese transition metal oxide, uh, mix, mix manganese chromium, mix manganese um, uh, vanadium uh, phosphate have been observed. Uh, this strategy also helps, uh, this, this analysis also helps indeed to avoid certain area of phase space and also investigate certain anomalies that have been reported from an, an experimental standpoint. With that, I close my talk and I thank you all for participating to and uh, listening to my talk. I would wish this would have been a physical meeting, but uh, we cannot do um, any better at this time. And thank you again. Uh, to all of you and the organizers. Thank you very much. I will be happy to answer any questions.